by faith and if you look at those beautiful signs right there that says you're getting ready to power up with power talks I'm sorry the online people you can take a look live with purpose and stand on principle that's coming this far by faith good evening and welcome to the hour of empowerment Power Talks at the Empowerment Center for Better Living. This is our Thursday evening spiritual experience. To our YouTube folks and our Facebook folks, I want you to right now go and subscribe and share this message because it's going to be a dynamite message. And I just want to know, are you ready to power up? Are you ready to rise up? Are you ready to empower yourself? Are you ready to have a dynamite message? If you're ready for all that, the music, everything is prepared just for you. The music, the message, everything is just for you. Uh, are you ready to get your spirit nurtured? Yeah. Our spiritual director, the Reverend Roderick N. Norton, here does that on Tuesdays. He does it on Thursdays. And on Thursdays, it's the bomb. Okay. And if anybody's thinking that that's what we got here, yes, we blowing it up. Amen. <laughs> So I want you to realize that you are an unrepeatable miracle of God. You're in your rightful place, doing your rightful thing, sitting right here in Power Talks. To our online audience, I welcome you as well. You better let the weather get better. The time changes on Sunday. I'm going to be looking for some of y'all on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays coming up. You know, I am just excited about it, and I am happy. This ministry is a ministry that teaches spiritual principle we nurture everybody to be their best self our minister has given his word that he's going to make sure that every single person in here get what they need they're going to make the right decisions they're going to have the best we're not waiting to the end of Lent for you to have a testimony we want your testimonies right now because God is good right now so with that said I'd like to welcome you to the Empowerment Center for Better Living where the Reverend Roderick N. Norton is our spiritual director. So right now I ask you to just be still for a moment in prayer. Just turn within. Father, we just have so much to be thankful for. For we have come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that you have created just for us. We thank you, Father, that we are one day closer to the best spring ever. We think we're one day closer to the best overcoming for Easter ever. We thank you, God, for everything. We thank you for every single person represented here. And if there are some new people online that are listening to us for the first time, Father, we give thanks for them. We ask you to continue to pour out of, your, pour out of the storehouse blessings on this ministry. We ask that you continue to bless our spiritual director, the Reverend Roderick N. Norton. Continue to pour into him. Holy Spirit, as he pours in to us. Father, we have so much to be grateful for. And we thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God, for this ministry and for everybody here. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. amen. Thank you, God. We will now have a musical selection.
ECBL beloved spiritual community reminders for March 7th, 2024. Join us on Tuesday, March 12th for the best metaphysical Bible study in the world. The lesson is going to be returning with joy. And if you want to read ahead, it's from Luke, the 10th chapter, 1st through the 23rd verse. Join us next Thursday, March 14th. Our Power Talks lesson is Release the Imprisoned Splendor. Go Rush Women's Conference 2024. It's happening. April 25th to April 27th at the Hyatt Regency in Lyle. Chauvel and more under the guidance of the Reverend Dr. Jacqueline Trish Atkins, who is the founder and the CEO and the host. It's all about celebrating yourself. I'm going to invite you to visit the website, goldrushwomensconference.com, and take advantage. Now, there may be a few payment plans left, but you can register online. There's a form. You can print it and register, or you can register by mail, or you can call 773-417-9595 to register. Uh, the Empowerment Center for Better Living supports this so much because he, all, Reverend Rod always tells us that when we come back, we come back ready to work when we come back from the Gold Rush Women's Conference. So I want to encourage you women to sign up for this. Uh, Reverend Jackie just said yesterday, if I think I heard correctly, that there might be some you could buy it for the day. You know, we would rather for you to come for the whole and get the whole weekend experience. But if you want to just come for the day, come for the day, but make sure you check that out. If you are in need of a contribution statement for 2023, fill out the contribution statement form on the resource table and send an email to, in, or you can send an email to info at Empower Living and request a statement. That will conclude our 
community reminders. It is now time for our power top thought our, and our meditative moments. So this is the power thought. I'm going to say it first, and I want you to repeat it, and I'm going to guide you. I take ownership of my spiritual identity in Christ. I own my peace. I own my love. I own my joy. I own my faith. I own my truth. I am enough in Christ. Are you ready? I take ownership, I take ownership of, my spiritual identity in Christ. of my spiritual identity in Christ. I own my peace. I own my, peace. I own my love. I own, I own my joy. I own my faith. I own my truth. I am enough in Christ. I am enough in Christ. I am enough in Christ. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I do believe in the power of three. <laughs> Let us right now prepare for our meditative moment. And I invite you now just to become still. Taking a deep breath. Breathing in. And just releasing. Because you're breathing the breath of God. So even when you take a deep breath, let your shoulders drop. And take a deep release with a deep sigh. Letting it all go. Whatever it is you came in here with, let it go. It's got to go. As you relax in this moment, I invite you to softly close your physical eyes. Shutting out the outer. And bringing all thoughts under the captivity of the Christ presence. For in this stillness, I invite you to elevate your mind. And open your heart. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place. Prepare yourself in this meditative moment to receive from your indwelling Christ. With a certainty, feel yourself connecting to the creative life of God that moves through you as radiant energy, vitality, and strength. In this consciousness, you live your life with intention and purpose, trusting the power of the Holy Spirit within you to reveal the divine ideas that come to you clothed with everything needing to bring, needed to bring them forth in your life and affairs. With complete certainty, believe the strength of spirit within you, having faith that God's absolute good is your only reality. Place everything in his hands, knowing the blessings of your faith are instantaneous. Believe in the truth that before you call, God has already answered. You are his living enterprise in a divine partnership as you live each day as a spiritually empowered child of God. As you take ownership of your spiritual identity in Christ, Know with confidence the strength of spirit within you. You are more than enough, divinely connected and guided. Looking to the one presence and the one power, let your thoughts and words attract the highest and best desires of your heart. Mountaintop thinking that overcomes negative and unloving conditions, lightens worries and anxieties in your life and affairs, paving the way for the consciousness that opens your spiritual eyes to see only God's best for you. With complete assurance, trust the spirit, the strength of spirit within you. As the healing presence, you are made in the image and likeness of God. Within your physical body is a spiritual source of life that is continually restoring, revitalizing, 
and renewing you. We give thanks to God for perfecting everything that concerns us. Have faith, trust, and believe, knowing that we are never without the support, the guidance, the strength, or healing touch of the Holy Spirit. Just take a deep breath. Breathe that in and release. And as you return right now to this present moment, the enrichment of our life, world, and affairs begins with a certainty of our spiritual identity in Christ, our divine connection. We recognize and release this inner spark, the strength of spirit within us. We totally commit to progressing on this journey of spiritual discovery. Thank you, God, for the power of your presence to lift us and guide us on the path to living an empowered life. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Amen. And amen. amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We will now have a musical selection. Joy of the Lord, rise. 
us. Good evening, Empowerment Center family. How are you doing this evening? Good, good, good. How is your Lenten experience going? Are you doing the work? Yes. Are you waiting for Jesus to do the work? <laughs> All right. Cause last week, I think last week I think you guys had a uh, different response. <laughs> So we're so we're all, so we're back on track, right? Yes. All right, all right, all right. I think we're having a few connectivity issues with YouTube and Facebook, but uh, hopefully uh, it'll be straightened out. If not, we will rebroadcast this on Facebook and YouTube, so you'll get the full service for those okay. are for those who are viewing us on uh, live stream right now. Uh, so it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. I am so happy to be here on this evening. It is refreshing. It is good. Uh, it is good to be in this place. <laughs> it is good to be in this place. <laughs> Pat, I don't know what's going on, but it's good. <laughs> Cynthia, I don't know what's going on, but it's good. Yeah, it's good. Oh, wow. I am beginning a new series. I'm beginning a new series this month called Discover the Power Within. Discover the Power Within. Repeat after me. I have power. Within me. Within me. <laughs> All right. So it's a, it's, a, it's a special series that will take you to the depths of your soul and allow you to explore the greatness within. I want to do this particular series during this particular time called the Lenten season because as I go through, this, as I go through these uh, lessons this month, we will be lockstep with Jesus, walking right there with Jesus. Um, because, one, because one of the major things that Jesus did when he came was to teach us about what? The power within us. So a great part of Jesus' message was about self-discovery. About self-discovery. He Look at this. Jesus, he challenged his disciples and all of his followers to dig deep and not to live life on the surface level, but to rise to the level of mastery. So, that's, so tonight our lesson is rising to the level of mastery. For Jesus, for just as Jesus uh, 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 challenged his disciples and his followers mm -hmm. to rise to the level of mastery and dig a little bit deeper, Jesus is also encouraging us and also challenging us right here today to also dig a little deeper. Mm -hmm. Repeat after me. I need to dig a little deeper. I need to dig a little deeper. <laughs> you see, throughout Scripture, it tells us how Jesus encouraged his followers to do the things he did, and not only that, but to do even greater things. See, he encouraged Peter to walk on water. And I think Peter probably had issues with even walking on land. <laughs> now, that's just, now, now, that's just me talking, okay? But this, is, but this is how Jesus worked. This is how Jesus began to encourage and to, and to push his people to do what? To dig a little deeper. He encouraged his disciples to go to various towns and to do whatever healing work needs to be done in those various towns. And they went to the various towns and they, and they, and they did the healing work and they came back to Jesus all excited. Like, they're like, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. People were healed. And not only were people healed, but even the demons <laughs> commanded, uh, uh, followed us and, and commanded as we said. So Jesus was always pushing his disciples. He was always pushing his followers to dig a little deeper and to begin to tap within themselves a greater power that until then they did not necessarily know that it existed. And guess what, John? Even today, we don't really fully understand the power we have within us because we have not <laughs> we have not only tapped, but we have not. We have also. We haven't dug. <laughs> you see, Carolyn, I need to. I need us to begin to get out our shovels because we need to do some digging. But the digging isn't outside of us. The digging is within us because right now there's a lot of stuff covering up that power that we have within us, but we can't see it. We can't realize because we got a lot of mud on top of it. So, so, so in order for us to begin to see the power that we have within us, in order for us to begin to see and to claim our own mastery, guess what? We have to dig a little bit deeper. 
and we can't continue to live just on the surface level. So Jesus is always about elevating you to the next level. Jesus is always about elevating you to the next level and never be satisfied with appearances or facts because appearances and facts can change. They can change. Repeat after me. Appearances and facts can change. Appearances and facts can change. Yeah. I could be without today, but have the abundance of God tomorrow. It's a fact that it's a fact I don't have the money in my bank account, but 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 guess what? That fact of the appearance can change. It might be a fact that I have a physical uh, situation that's going on, but guess what? Through the miracle working power of God, guess what? That can change. <laughs> So, so don't lean too heavily on appearances and facts. <laughs> we don't know much about what occurred in Jesus' life between the time of his birth and the age of 30 when he began to really enter into his ministry and began to do the works. But during this time, Jesus evidently did this. Jesus evidently developed a unique relationship with God that very few people understood or even knew about. Remember as, a, remember as a child, uh, 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 they went to, they, uh, the whole town went to the Passover, and after the Passover was over with, they were headed, they were headed back home, and it took them, it took them a, a couple of days before they even realized that Jesus was no longer with them, but Jesus stayed behind because Jesus was still in the temple. He was there learning from the elders. He was, he was questioning them. And then they came back, and Jesus' mother wanted to somewhat reprimand him, like, 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 did, like, did you not know that me and your father and, and everyone else was, was concerned about you? And Jesus was like, did you know that I would be in my father's house? Because <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, even as a child, was developing this unique relationship with his father. He was developing his mastery. What is mastery? I went to, I went, I went to the, I went to the uh, dictionary to figure out uh, exactly what does the dictionary say about mastery. The dictionary, the dictionary says this is about mastery. It says it is the position or authority of a master. It also says it's a skill or knowledge that makes one master of something. Mastery. So Jesus was our master teacher because he demonstrated mastery over every situation he encountered. Even the cross. And what some people refer to as the last enemy called death. But Jesus mastered everything that he encountered because he developed what? He developed mastery. So what a master teacher does is teach his or her followers the principles of truth. And if properly applied, get this, if properly applied, you will receive the desired demonstration. I don't ever recall Jesus going around doing the things that Jesus needed to do, and, Jesus, and, 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 and he did not get the desired, the desired demonstration. Because Jesus knew something, Judge, about working with principle. So Jesus knew that if I work with principle, and not just any kind of principle, but spiritual principle, if I work with spiritual principle, then this must happen. Jesus was not a, Jesus was not a worker of magic, for there was a spiritual principle he connected with in bringing forth demonstrations. He knew that if God was, get this, he knew that if God was life, <laughs> He could call forth this life in an individual and say, Lazarus, come forth. He worked with what? Spiritual principle. He knew what the desired outcome was for him. See, so he knew that as long as he stayed working with spiritual principle, that he had to have the desired outcome. So when he called forth life in Lazarus, what happened? Lazarus got up and came forth. He knew that if God is universal substance, then there could never be a lack of anything. So that's why he was able, that's why he was able to use an, as an example the bread and the fish and was able to multiply it and had 12, had 12 basketfuls left over, which just simply shows the abundance of God that which can never be what? Can never be depleted. Talking about what? Working with spiritual principles so that you can become masters, so that you can elevate yourself 
to the next level of mastery. What we have done so far in living has not <laughs> even touched the surface of what's possible. Jesus knew that if he and the Father were one, <laughs> then he was one with all people and all things. So Jesus knew that if I and the Father are one, then I am one with all people and all things. So then if there's any turbulence in my life called the, called the sea, <laughs> if there's any turbulence going on, I can speak to the winds, I can speak to the waves, I can tell those things, peace. Be still, because he understood the spiritual principle of oneness. He understood his connection with God. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm talking about here? Because I want us to elevate ourselves <laughs> to that level of mastery. I like Albert, Albert Einstein said this. He says, only one, only one who devotes himself to a cause with his whole strength and soul, can be a true master. For this reason, mastery demands all of a person. Mm. You can't give it just partial attention. You can't just give it your attention on Sundays. You can't just give it your attention on Thursdays. You just can't give it your attention on Bible study. Mastery, mastery demands all of your attention. If I'm looking for demonstrations, then let me make sure that I am developing the skills, the techniques, and I am using the spiritual principles that are necessary so that I can have the demonstration that I am desirous of. And let, get this, and let me not allow somebody to take my, uh, my eye or my focus off of the spiritual principle. I don't care how close they are to you. And get this. Not only, do, not only don't I care how close they are to you, I don't care how far away they might be from you. Because it's very, because get this, a lot of times the people that take our focus off are those who have issues with us and we have issues with them. I don't have time to have issues with you if I'm trying to develop this next level of mastery. Who are you? Do you know who you are? Who are you? You are an idea in the mind of God. You are an idea in the mind of God. I am an idea in the mind of God that was created in the image and likeness of God. Therefore, I have all the qualities and all the attributes of God. <laughs> that's who I am and that's who you are. You see, mastery is a part our, of our divine inheritance as a child of God, belonging to us as the image likeness of God. Mastery and dominion are exercised as we lay hold of the power of God. You cannot have mastery if you do not lay hold of the power of God. Me laying hold of the power of God allows me to do what? Have mastery. Nobody else gives me mastery, mastery but God. That's it. So as I learn to speak to God, as I learn to commune with God, as I learn to work the spiritual principles from God, as I learn to have this connectivity, I begin to lay hold of something greater, something beautiful, something marvelous, something wonderful. I begin to lay hold of my own mastery. Since the nature of God is absolute good, then that must also be the essence of my nature. Since the nature of God is absolute good, I'm talking about, I'm talking about, I'm talking about you elevating, I'm talking about you rising to the level of mastery. You have to know that you have to know that the nature of God is absolute good. So if that's the nature of God, then guess what? That's also that is also your true nature. It might not be how you're currently acting out. <laughs> but, but, but once again, I need us to get past the surface. 
and dig a little deeper so that we can begin to act out from that space and that place of who we truly are. I need us to begin to get to that level, Judge, of mastery called the Christ within. Because once I begin to learn, once I begin to learn how to work with the Christ within and identify it and become one with it, then I can begin to act out a different kind of way. Innately, we're all good. And we all have the potential of expressing the Christ. But only, but unfortunately, everyone doesn't know that. Eric Butterworth, in his book, Discover the Power Within You, says, in the concept of the divinity of man, he says, there are no bad or weak people. There are only good people expressing themselves incompletely and strong people frustrating their potential of strength and ignorant of their innate goodness. <laughs> so Jesus discovered a divine dimension in himself by his own self-discovery. Understand, there was a period of time before Jesus even got to his ministry, uh, got into full-time ministry, that Jesus was working with who? With Jesus. Jesus was working with his relationship with God. Jesus was working with having a self-discovery. Jesus was working with developing the Christ within himself. So Jesus' mastery came through study listening, and application. I'm going to repeat that. Jesus' mastery came through study, listening, and application. He knew how to tune into the one mind that we call the mind of God. And he became one with that mind, and guess what? He operated out of that mind. One of the things that we really need to get an understanding of is that there is only one mind. Stop dividing up this mind. There's only one mind, and that's the mind of God. And this is where mastery begins. I don't have a mind. You don't have a mind. There's only one mind, and that's the mind of God. What do we have? We have awareness within that mind. We are points of awareness in the one mind. And we have been given, get this, we have been given full access to all of the wisdom of that mind. Stop going around thinking you don't know it. You do know, you do know stuff. Don't dumb me down yourself. Level up yourself. Master up yourself. You know more than you think you know. Because you are in that one mind that knows all. So if I am in that one mind that knows all, then guess what? All the information, all the knowledge, all the wisdom that I need to know. You see, I don't need to know everything. Stop going around thinking you need to know everything. You're not ready to know everything. <laughs> Open yourself up to that which you need to know at this particular time. Don't worry about what you need to know tomorrow. Don't worry about what you need to know next week. Don't worry about what you wish you had known Ten, uh, ten days ago. <laughs> worry, worry, about your, worry about your access to divine mind right now. Father, what is it that I need to know right now on this journey called life so that I can do the things that I've been called to do so I can become master of my own life, master of my own experiences? What is it that I need to know? <laughs> And let me not be so concerned about what Jan knows. Let me not be so concerned about what Freddie knows. No, what do I need to know? And if I open myself up and listen, he'll tell me everything I need to know. <laughs> you know, amazing how we will, we will say, I was, thinking, I, was, I was thinking that same thing. And our response would be what? There's only one mind. There's only one mind. Just as after, just as afternoon, I, I had called. Uh, I had called Rodney. I said, I said, I want a different song to open up uh, this, uh, this, the service this evening. And 
he, uh, he reached out to Larry, he reached out to Cynthia, and the response, the re the response back was, uh, I think, I think you, you, you reached out to Cynthia, you said that, what about, um, uh, we come this far by faith. And Cynthia, from my understanding, Cynthia said, this is something I just got off the phone with talking to somebody else about. I would, and, and she's like, there's only one mind, you know, let's do it, you know? <laughs> We just have awareness in that one mind. We're connected that way. That's why you got to stop going around thinking you are disconnected from that one mind. No, you're part of it. <laughs> See Jesus in a different way today. See Jesus as the great discovery, the, the, great, the, the great discoverer of the divinity of man, the pioneer and the way shore, and the great world within us. Before Jesus came, there was really no one else who came and began to talk about the divinity, our divinity. There was never really one that came and really talked about our oneness. The other prophets talked about how great God is, what God, what God can do, or what God did, but Jesus came to show us that if we develop the Christ consciousness, that we too could become God, could become God incarnate and begin to move about as great channels of God. For Jesus said, follow me. So if I could just simply work on developing the Christ consciousness within myself and, and, begin, to, and begin to internalize this, and begin to follow Jesus' command of follow me, I too can become God incarnate, which means, that, which means that I can begin to express the God within me, the Christ within me, here in this body. I don't have to wait for another lifetime to do it. I can begin right now to express the fullness and the allness of God right now. When you see me, you ought to be able to say, that's God, I cannot separate the two of you. Jesus said it's possible. And that's why his message was always the Father and our one, the Father and our one, the Father and our one. He wanted that, he wanted that to penetrate even to this day in us. Stop thinking that you're separated from God. You're not separated from God. For once you begin to think you're separated from God, then you begin to, then you begin to separate yourself from your own mastery. Stop going around thinking you're powerless. You can't do nothing. As long as you go around thinking you're powerless, then guess what? You also believe that you are masterless. So how can you ever become a master if you believe you're masterless? Claim your power. I might not like what's going on, but I refuse to allow this to define my experience and my existence in life. I have the power within me to do what I need to do so that I can overcome this situation and any other situation and whatever it is that you're doing. It will not become an obstacle in my life because I am a master. Come on now. Accept your mastery. Don't be afraid to move up to a higher level of consciousness. Don't be so comfortable on this level of, co of consciousness. Oh, I've been around for a while. I don't need to elevate myself any higher. I'm okay where I am. No, you're not. No, you're not. And I'm not. I want to see everything that God can do through me. Amen. Yeah, you too. Yes. You too. All right. We're in agreement here. And not only do I want to see everything that God can do through me, I want the world to be able to see that which God can do through me because maybe it will change somebody else. Maybe it will touch somebody else. Maybe it will help someone else to be transformed. Yeah. 
Mm. There's a story of the prodigal son. There was a father who had two, who had two sons. One of the sons went to the father and wanted an early inheritance. <laughs> so, his, so his father, the father did not argue with him. And like and the father said, well, why don't you just leave it? Why don't you just, why don't you just leave it alone for a while and, and, and think it over? No. The father granted the son's wish. So the son got everything that, 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 that was supposedly belong to him as far as, as, far as his inheritance. And he, and, he, and he went off to a far land, they say, or, or, or a far country. They, he went off. And when he, as, he, as he went off, he began to spend money here. He began to spend money there. He began to spend money there. <laughs> <laughs> and it got to it got to, it got to a point where famine took over the land, and 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 and, and he had and he had squalored. He had he had he had wasted all of that which he had been given, to the point where now. He didn't, have, he, didn't, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't have anything to eat. <laughs> so he was able to find somebody that would hire him to feed the pigs. And get this, the pigs were being fed better than he was being fed. And then one day, he had an awakening. He said, he said I'm here slopping pigs. And I believe, get this, I believe that the Christ within him was beginning to percolate. Was beginning, was beginning to, was beginning to nudge you, was beginning to say, was beginning to say, you don't have to stay here. You stand here <laughs> as a choice. Larry, play me out. I'm, I'm about to get sit down here. <laughs> so, so one day he got on up. And he said, he said, he said, I think I'm going to go back to my father's house. Because, 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 because I don't have to stay here feeding the pigs, knowing that they're being fed better than I'm being fed. And I'm, I'm right now, I'm still going hungry. So he got up. He went back to the father's house, and he was, and he was willing to be one of the servants to the father. And as he was going back to the father's house, Some folks were coming to meet him. And the father, and, 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 and as the folks were coming to meet him, I believe, I believe that the Christ within him was becoming even greater. He said, I said, I think I made the right decision. And the father told his servants to go get my son the best robe. Go get my son a good ring. And go get my son some fair gummos to put on his feet. <laughs> and, 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 let's, and, let's, and, let's, and let's have a and let's have a big celebration to welcome my son back into the fold. For my son has come to the realization that I don't have to stay on this particular level, but I can rise up and reclaim my mastery. I can go back to my father's house. I don't even have to worry about apologizing because my father doesn't even need an apology. My father has open arms for me. Same thing with us. Rise up to your level of mastery. You don't have to continue to stay wherever you are. But you can rise up 
I don't care what the deeds you thought you did that you thought might have been unforgivable. It does not matter. I don't care how long you have been doing whatever it is you have been doing. It does not matter. Stop right where you are and understand. I don't have to stay here. I can rise up. And I can go back to my father's house and reclaim my mastery. The father within is calling you home right now. Is calling you home right now. Just say yes. Just say yes. Just say yes. Claim your mastery. Rise up to that level. You can have as far as you can see. God bless you. get ready for our love offering, our tithes, our seed offering, however you come prepared to give. If you need to give via the website, just go to empowerliving.org and hit the donate button. If you need to give via cash app, just do the cash symbol ECBL. Just write out a check, just make it payable to Empowerment Center. So however you are come prepared to give right now, Please repeat after me. I give freely, I give freely. From, the rich. from the rich, radiant, radiant. Unlimited, substance unlimited substance of God. As I give, As I give. It, is it is immediately being replaced, being replaced. With, even more. with even more. Thank you, God, Thank for the millionfold increase. Million fold increase. And so it is. it all. Listen, I've been, I was listening to a little Andre Crouch earlier today. Yeah, <laughs> it'll come back. It'll come to you, Larry. It'll come to you. <laughs> Help him out, Cynthia. I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. There's been times when I didn't know what to do. each and every situation God gave me blessed consolation that my trials only come to make me strong oh so through it all
thanks to each and every one of you for being out here on this evening. Don't, don't forget on Sunday to change your clock so you're a little bit more daylight in the evening time next week. So uh, it's a beautiful thing. I love, this, I love this time of year. I love this time of year. So I look forward to seeing you out next Thursday as we continue to discover the power within. And uh, we're just going to build on this lesson that we started tonight, okay? We're just going to build it. But your assignment is this. Your assignment is this. I want you to dig a little bit deeper this week. I want you to dig a little bit deeper this week. And if you, if you find that there might be some stuff that's covering up your innate goodness, clear it out. Clear it out. Because I want you to claim, or actually I want you to reclaim your mastery. All right? So I look forward to seeing you next week, and uh, don't forget, tomorrow evening, for those who are part of the uh, class, you have your class session tomorrow evening, so uh, get ready for that, and we're good. So let's turn within right now, to right where you are. Just want to say thank you, Father, Mother, God, for this experience that we, today, right here, right now, we are claiming our mastery. We walk out of here as masters. Claiming the Christ within us. For with God, all things are possible. And we take on the same mind that Jesus took on. Let the same mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. The mind of a master. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And we do know that the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And so it is. Amen. God bless you.